Hi, welcome everyone. My name is James Serra. I am a data platform architecture lead at EY. I joined EY recently. Before that, I was a data platform architect at Microsoft for seven years, where I spent a lot of time discussing with customers the modern data warehouse, which is the topic of this short video. Today, I'll try to keep it under 20 minutes with a lot of whiteboarding, no slides on this one. And the, the idea is that I want to talk to you at a high level of what a modern data warehouse is, the concepts such as a data lake and, and using a relational database is what I'll go through and the five stages of putting data into a data warehouse. But the whole idea is I want to ingest all this data and I want to use it to make better business decisions by having all this data in one location in there. I'll also, after talking about through the concepts that will be most of the video is then show you what Microsoft products would be used for each of these stages within this modern data warehouse. So let's jump to whiteboarding. All right, so we begin with the first stage, which is ingesting the data. And this could have a lot, you could have a lot of data on-prem in the cloud that you need to collect all in one location. And I'm gonna focus this session on moving this data into a cloud like Azure. The second stage is where you're gonna take this ingested and you're gonna store it someplace. This will be your data lake. And then the next step is where you're gonna transform the data. And this is where we go from ELT, we go into ELT, extract, load, and transform instead of extract, transform, and load. So the idea is we're gonna move this data right into a, lady into a the data lake and then we're gonna transform it. And then we'll go into step four, which is to model the data. Because the data as it sits in a data lake may not be easily consumable for the average end user. So we need to model it and put it in a relational database to make it easier for that end user to consume it. Which leads to stage five, visualize. And I'll put an ML here too. And this is where we're gonna make those better business decisions by being able to investigate the data through reporting or through machine learning. Now, these are not hard and fast rules. You could visualize earlier in, in these stages and so and machine learning, but for my subject of this video, we're gonna break it out into five. And, and most, you'll see most architects break it out into these five. They may call them a little differently, but in general, they're following the same flow. So let's now look at stage one, ingesting. So I may have a ton of different data sources that I wanna ingest. And this, there could be many challenges just in this one step right here because I can have data that's on-prem. It could be in the cloud. It could be data that is really large. It could be stream data on here. For the purposes of this video, we're going to focus just on batch-oriented, so not streaming. Streaming will add a little bit more complexity. It'll be generally the same, but it'll be other, other options and products inside of that. But this ingestion could... I could have a lot of hours with customers just talking about this phase on there because the challenges are, I could have many petabytes of data sitting on-prem that I need to move into the cloud. I could have data that I have to move every day and I, I could struggle with that because of the size of the data. And do I wanna do incremental updates or a flush and fill? Do I have a big enough pipe from on-prem to the cloud? So all, all the things to talk about in, in further conversations on here. But the idea is, I, look, I just wanna collect all this data and ingest it all. So where do we want to land it when we ingest it? Well, that's step stage two, and this is where we have our data lake come into play. And when we ingest it from the source, we want to put it into this raw layer of the data lake. Now a data lake design, another topic that you can spend many hours on, and I've done that with customers is you need to, to design your data lake up front to be able to handle all the different types of data that you're going to ingest. And every customer is different. So the layers that I'll talk about here are not, are not always the same. There are, could be many more layers with some customers. They could be named differently. But the idea is I want to use that ELT. I want to land the data in its raw format in the data lake. And then this is where I'm going to go into stage three is that raw data needs to be cleaned. And so I'm going to have 
the clean layer in a data lake. So step three is we have, stage three is we have this compute and this compute is going to take that raw data and put it in the clean layer. Now that may not be enough at this point because I may need, in order to allow other people to query and report off this data, I may need to do more of it. And this is where we get into what we typically see customers have as a presentation layer. And this is where I take the data and I, the clean data and I join it with other data, I aggregate, I do all these things to make it easier for end users to consume. Because at this point, I could have some end users that want access to data. Now, these are usually power users or data scientists, which are signified by somebody wearing a hat. And they could go and query that data. Maybe they want it in raw format, uh, but, but they also may want it after it's cleaned in or in presentation layer. But this is the great thing about a data lake. The schema on read means I can land data in there very, and I can clean it very quickly and have people access it right away. I can even say uh, data scientists may want to have a sandbox layer where they want to take a copy of the data and do other things to it. So this is the, the power of having a data lake. And there's many, many benefits of a data lake, which I put in my blog. And I'll just, I just touch, uh, touch on a, co a couple of them here. But the one that's, that resonates with a lot of customers is to think if you have a relational database and you have a staging area where you're doing all this cleaning of the data, the data lake at the very least could be that staging area removed from the relational database. And now I can clean this data and I can put tons of compute on top of it without impacting end users who are hitting the relational database on there. So that idea of a maintenance window can go, can go out the window, literally, and not have to have a maintenance window anymore because all that, all that time to clean the data is done outside of that. But still, the data lake may not be in a format that is conducive for end users to consume it. It may be too difficult for them. They, it may be too technical for them to do reporting off of that. And this is in large part because the data lake has does not have the metadata along with the data like a relational database does. So in many times, it, it could be too much for an end user to just go into a data lake because data lake really is just a glorified file folder in there. And it's just files and folders in there. So an end user may be too much. And this is where we get into step four, where we want to model the data. And we want to do that into a relational database. And so this is where we land the data from the data lake. Most of that, if not, doesn't have to be all of it, could be copied into a relational database in thorough normal form. We could even go one step further and put this into a star schema to make it even easier for end users. So what's happening is this is an enterprise solution where IT is doing a lot of the work to move this data along into a format that is easily consumed by an end user with the trade-off is this is more time and expense to do that but it's almost always worth it because of of now it making it easy for an end user just to go to a dashboard uh, a, a canvas and, and drag fields onto that canvas and create the dashboards and reports and queries but you have the best of both worlds because somebody is has the technical chops they can access the data as it sits in a data lake and not have to wait till it goes into this process and this is where we get into then step five. So this is where we visualize the data. So we have this end user over here who says, oh, this is awesome. It's in a star schema. I don't even have to know how to join the data. I can just click and drag it and, and get value of the data right away. And so this is at a high level. This is your modern data warehouse with the five steps. And usually the first question I get is, do you have to have all the five steps? Can you skip them? And the answer is, yeah, there, there are exceptions to everything. A lot depends on the, the type of data that each customer has. And as, as an example is some customers say, look, James, I, I wrote all these SSI packages for my on-prem solution I moved in the cloud. And those SSI packages are not using the data lake. So could I just use those SSI packages and repoint them and go right to a relational database from a, a relational database that I have on-prem? Because now I have to do an extra work. I have to take that relational database, export it out, to a file like CSV and then import into a data lake and then copy into a relational database. Is it worth it? Well, many times it is worth it. But to get a quick win or to build a solution quicker, you may want to 
have in some cases use those SSIS packages or, or build a solution without bypassing a data lake and then go back and, and add them to the data lake. Because what will happen is if, you, if you do this is you'll get that power user data scientists will go, wait a minute, you have data in the, in, the, in the relational database that I need in the data lake and now it's not in there. So can you move in there? And now you have to go reverse way in there. So, and you also miss out on all these additional benefits of the data lake that I have in my blog. But some of those other could be, in addition to cleaning the data in there, you could have unlimited storage that's very cheap in there because we can have tiering in there and we can make it very cost, cost cheap to, to keep data in there indefinitely. So if I need to go back and rerun a job because it didn't clean it properly, the data is sitting in a, in a data lake on there. So lots of reasons to keep all your data in the data lake, but understand there may be exceptions for that. Okay, so now let's look at how would this look in a Azure world with all the various products that it has in there, which overlap some of the use cases in there. So hopefully I'll, I'll clear some of that up. So when we look at stage one, that ingestion part of that, the one product that most customers use in Azure Data Factory. That's a great orchestration tool that is very performant when it needs to move data from point A to point B. That point A could be data on-prem, could be in the cloud. I want to move it and land it into the data lake. So Data Factory would be your tool for that. Okay, what do I use for the data lake? Well, this is where in Azure we have Azure Data Lake Store Gen 2. It's kind of, it used to be blob storage and now Data Lake Store Gen 2 underneath the covers is using blob storage, but it's put this layer on top of it with a bunch of additional features, such as hierarchical support and additional security on top of that. And there's a lot of features in Data Lake Store Gen 2 that you want to check out to help you with performance or to help you save money or a lot of other options in there. For example, it has object tiering, so I can have data and I can specify whether that's in hot or cold or archive on there. So uh, with some trade-offs, I can go into archive and save a lot of money on that data. So definitely make sure you check all those out in there. Okay, so I have this data sitting in, in the data lake in Gen 2. It's strictly storage. I need to put compute on top of it to do things like cleaning. This is where a lot of options. One is Azure Data Factory, we have this thing called data flows which is a lot like SSIS, if you're familiar with that product, where I can visually transform the data. I can say, I have data in raw. I want to take that data and I want to apply all these rules visually on there. And it, it's a low code, no code. And I want to clean that data and land into a clean layer in the data lake on there. So Data Factory is great at that. If that doesn't give you all the features you need, so maybe there's some library that you need to use, this is where a lot of customers start using Databricks. And it's not an either or. So Databricks being a Spark-based solution where you create Spark notebooks, that could be too daunting for a lot of customers in there. So they want to use Data Factory, Data Flows as much as possible, but there may be a case where, oh, I, I can't support this in, in data flows and I'll use Databricks. So this is where a lot of customers are using both. Now, interestingly enough, Data Factory behind the scenes, when you go to run it, all that visual transformation you created takes that code and puts it into a Spark cluster and runs it. So that's where it's very performant. And you, I like to tell customers, think of it as, Data Factory, Data Flows is putting a pretty interface over Spark. And Data, fa data Flows has a couple options now. Mapping Data Flows, which is that visual interface, but also a thing called Wrangling Data Flows, which is Power Query. So you have two ways to now transform that data. And, and so you want to look at those and see what works best for your skill set. And that's what I ask a lot of customers, what is your current skill set? And that's going to direct me to which product to use in there. And there's plenty of others to use. There's, there's HD Insights, and then you can use third-party products in here to transform your data. So, so make sure you, you you look at all those products and those features, and then match it against what your current skill set is. All right. So now let's go to stage four. This is where we want to model the data, and where we're going to land this. And this is where Synapse comes into play. And I have a whole video on on Synapse 
that you may want to check out because there's a lot to it. If I can spell. And this is where in Synapse you can have a dedicated pool. And this dedicated pool is a relational database. And I can then use Data Factory to take that data and put it into this relational database in Synapse. Now, here's where it gets very interesting because Synapse, which G8 a, a couple of months ago, has a lot of features in there that one called Synapse Studio that allows you to do everything I've talked about inside Synapse Studio. So I don't have to jump out to use Data Lake Store Gen 2 or use Data Factory. I can do that all within Synapse. Even Spark, Synapse has its own version, it has its open source Spark, where if I need to use Spark, I can go with that inside of Synapse under that single pane of glass. And it even has Data Factory. Now, it's not called Data Factory, but it's using the same code base. It's called Pipelines and Data Flows in there. So I can, I can use all that, that, I can use that product inside of Synapse without having to, to leave. And, and you have also a great option in Synapse for cleaning the data, and it's called Synapse Serverless. So this is, as it says, a serverless, you pay for query, an option to query data sitting on a data lake using regular T-SQL. So this is the big thing, because with Databricks, it's got its own version of SQL, and same with other third-party products. With, with Synapse, I can use the T-SQL that I may know and love and pull that data out of the raw format, clean it using T-SQL, and write it into the clean layer. Or I can use Data Factory inside of Synapse for that. So a lot of options. Again, look at your skill set, look at what you need to get done, and then, and then choose the best option in there. All right. And, and Synapse, it, 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 look, go into that other video that I've created, and you can see a lot more about the features in Synapse. And then finally, this is where we get into our visualization or machine learning is Power BI. Now, Power BI has machine learning, automated machine learning in there, and you can use that. You can use another product outside of that, like machine learning services in Azure. But Power BI can, can, do, can do both. And it's excellent at reporting. It's also within Synapse Studio. So if I use, again, Synapse Studio, I have a single player in glass where I can also use Power BI reports. Now, there's a lot of topics. Uh, this is a step five here. It could be a long conversation with customers on how to properly use Power BI to get the most performance and costs along with it, because Power BI has all these options like import mode and direct query mode. Underneath the covers is using a tabular model. So do I want to import the data into that tabular model, or do I want to uh, just pull it from the star schema sitting in Synapse? So there's, there's a lot of things to talk about in here. But at a high level, think of Power BI as your reporting tool that can ingest this data from your dedicated pool in Synapse. Now, Power BI also has options to pull data from the data lake or even back to the sources in there. Now that's when you get into Power BI being more of a self-service tool for your end user, your power user, and not an enterprise solution in there. But there's a lot of synergy going on between the two, to that product and, and Synapse now. So I can do things in Power BI, like use Power BI data flow, and, and end user can do that. And then you can copy that code into an enterprise solution in Synapse or, or Data Factory and reuse it. So you can think of Power BI as a, as a great way to prototype for an end user. So instead of asking them as an IT person what an end user's business requirements are, you can just say, can you go and prototype in Power BI? And then I will take what you've done and import and use some of that inside of this enterprise solution on there. So there you have it. That's a very high level. This is, I went over a modern data warehouse where we have these five steps on here. I talk about the concepts at a high level of, of data lake and relational database. And then I plugged in various Microsoft products that you can use when building this solution in Azure. And let me go back to my slide here. So if you have any questions about what I went over, feel free to reach out to me. There's my email address. And also go on my blog because a lot of what I talked about, I go into more detail on my blog. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit something. And, and again, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.